Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going to give a very brief um, feel for the kind of modeling work that we've been doing under the ARENA project. And um, for those of you who don't know, or maybe you are aware, so IFPRI often is using its country economy-wide models to help governments, working directly with governments, to help them design and prioritize their policy and investment options, uh, usually sort of feeding into national ag investment plans or, um, or national development plans. And so... Um, and so uh, until fairly recently, we largely focused on the kinds of po identifying the kinds of policies or investments that Derek was talking about, focusing primarily on those that are most effective at reducing poverty and hunger and, um, and accelerating agricultural growth, like the work we did for the African Union's CADAP initiative and so on. And so with those two objectives, it's not surprising that in country after country, our results showed and we recommended to governments that they should really invest in um, smallholder staple crops, particularly cereals and root crops and so on. So not particularly nutritious recommendations. And, uh, and so what ARENA has been helping us uh, do is add a, uh, a nutrition or a diet lens to some of the tools that we've been using that we continue to use directly with government. So this is one mechanism for affecting change in the way uh, sort of agricultural policy is formulated. So here's one, one example. This is some work we've been doing recently, working with, um, this is uh, together with another Gates project as well, actually. Um, and this is a very simplified view of the kind of results that come out of our modeling analysis. What we're looking at here are, say, looking at all the different value chains. In this case, we're looking at Tanzania, although I'm not advertising that. This is work in progress. But, um, but we're looking at all the different value chains that are in Tanzania. We're asking, if you could expand them, which products would be the most effective at, at reducing rural poverty, so that's the red circle at the top, which ones would be most effective at accelerating agri-food system GDP, so that's all the downstream beyond the farm value addition that's happening in, in the country. And again, um, if you look at just those two dimensions, you'll see the kinds of pr uh, value chains, the top ranked value chains that tend to come out tend to be the cereals, the maize, very poverty, redu uh, poverty reducing, and sorghum, wheat, um, barley, and rice. And so that's very how we came at some of the recommendations in the mid 2000s. Today, now that we've added the dietary diversity of the rural poor lens, and we can, I'm not going to go into the details of it, you can start to see the products that we'd overlooked start to come to the top. So we're talking about uh, milk, cattle, um, fruit, and obviously vegetables sitting right there in the middle. And this has been, um, this, this kind of analysis incredibly simplified, and of course it's not at the level of detail that a lot of the nutritionists want to see our policies, but this is proving to be highly influential in the way in which we interact with president's offices who are picking priority commodities or agricultural investment plans who are deciding where to put their resources going forward. We're also now, this is just a highlight, we're now moving away from picking products to thinking about policies, right? And so rather than thinking about maize, we're talking about input subsidy programs. Rather than thinking about where does irrigation sit, or, you know, what are the returns to irrigation, where should that be ranked in the investment plans, we can see that irrigation now sits both um, around dietary diversity because of its links to, uh, to vegetables and, and to rice. Uh, it's also linked to, to growth. And the non-cereal input subsidies, the seeds for vegetables and others, um, those show up as being linking both to poverty and to dietary diversity. And this is, this is another very promising avenue that we're doing together with the ARENA project and some other work with the agriculture group at Gates, literally linking the agriculture and nutrition groups. So if I think about just two things, two areas where ARENA has been helping us uh, expand what we do at IFPRI, the first is it's been helping us expand our models so that they're more nutrition relevant. So in our models, you can see over time, these are the different number of product groups that we include in our country models. And you can see that over time, it has been getting better and better. But just recently, thanks to ARENA, we've really made an, a concerted effort to expand the detail on nutrition, nut most nutritionally relevant food products. So the meat, the fish, the dairy, separating out leafy green vegetables from other vegetables, the kinds of things I had never thought were particularly important to focus on. But now that we're looking at nutrition, they're very much so. Um, and we're sort of rolling out this, these new insights to the models that we are um, using across the world. And the final area, the second area, is around the way in which we measure dietary improvements. So we'd started thinking, oh yes, we'll measure child stunting or wasting, and then we realized actually we don't have a strong economic theory to link our models, uh, hang our models to on, on for, um, for those outcomes. We turned to dietary diversity and found that just counting food groups wasn't um, particularly useful for us because it lacked the sort of structural um, uh, the structural linkages that we need inside our models. And so we move to comparisons with an ideal diet, comparing our before and after policy diets with some kind of target diet. 
And the traditional approach to estimating those, those target diets was this least cost mechanism. And we were quite surprised as uh, modelers and modern modelers and modern uh, sort of operations research type people that actually they're still using these linear programming tools that have been around for the better part of a century. And, and so what we've been doing now, and I'll end on this, is developing a, a more useful metric for our modeling and, and one which uh, sort of preserves the revealed preferences that people are showing us from the com consumption patterns that they already have. And we're particularly excited about what this means for sort of further modeling and more, more refined modeling in the future. Thanks.